evening, everyone. Happy quarantine. Hello, welcome to uh, Get the Fork Out. And uh, I am your host, Brennan. Uh, <laughs> Hello, welcome to uh, Get the Fork Out. I am your host, Brennan Dates. Today, we have my friend, Nikki Mingeldorf. She works on a motor vessel, Pacific Hope. They go around the world to disasters, natural disasters, floods, hurricanes, you name it. Um, and they go, volcano eruptions. And, and they are kind of the first responders and they'll go and they'll tr assess what the needs are and it's a big like 60 meter x fishing boat that's been totally converted and pimped to do just this to deliver water to deliver food to deliver uh construction materials building trash facilities that they don't have after a flood and research a flood and a disaster so it's a very interesting project I went and I volunteered for two weeks and it was it was epic and, and, and that's why I have Nikki on because I want I want everyone to know what they're doing um, yeah it's non-denominational I'm not a huge religious person uh, they are part of a mission but it, it's it's just something amazing to do if you're interested in volunteering or if you're between jobs and want something cool to do um, just to lend a hand. You, you'll go to an amazing place, you'll, you'll work with amazing people, helping other people. And, and Nikki and I talk about that and what, what you get out of that. It's really intense and you, I feel like you get much more out of it than what you what you put in. Um, can't recommend it enough. I hope you like the podcast. Again, this is Nikki Mingeldorf from Motor Vessel Pacific Hope. Hope you enjoy. Hello everyone, this is uh, Get the Fork Out. Uh, today we have my friend Nikki, and uh, we met on a, um, on a boat called Pacific Hope that goes around the world helping people with food, water, medical treatment after natural disasters. And it's an amazing mission, what they do. And so Nikki's on here today to talk a little bit about that and, uh, and whatever else comes up. So, hello yeah. Nikki. Perfect. Well, hi guys. Thank you, Brennan, for the introduction. That was so kind. Um, it's good to be on the podcast with you and you've been doing such an amazing job with this. It's been very interesting. <laughs> to see thanks. So thanks, thanks for bringing me on board. No, I no problem. It. No problem. Yeah. You get it. I think your story, um, your story and Pacific Hope stories, I think it's going to interest a lot of people. Oh, well, cool. Well, they, uh, hopefully. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> Gosh, I can't tell you. I mean, obviously, I've made some amazing friendships along the way. Who would have thought that you and I would have met on a Christian missionary vessel, if that makes sense? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time, like, it's, gosh, it's just taking me to all sorts of places I never, never thought I would be in, in the best, best of ways. So well, why don't you describe what is the what, what's the idea behind it? What's the what's the driving force? So Pacific Hope is a organization and we have a 200 foot medical ship. We call it a medical ship, but it's really a ship, really an organization that goes to improvised areas, uh, disaster areas. Like we went, we were one of the first organizations in after the Bahamas when um, the oh, hurricane yeah. grew recently, which a lot of people are very familiar with. And one of the things I've absolutely loved about our organization and what we do is, yes, we, we have two full dental chairs. We have a full dental clinic. We come equipped with eye surgeons sometimes, depending on what, when they can come in. But really what we first do is we find out what's needed. And yeah. one of the thing, and it's, it's so nice to have that versatility because one of the things when we first went to the Bahamas, uh, they just needed fresh water. And it, yeah. was, it was, it was something so simple, but yes, we could bring the doctors. Yes. We could bring in all the stuff. And we did, we did all that too. But one of the, the big driving force behind Pacific Hope is we go in, we've got eager volunteers anywhere from the doctors. I was just talking about all the way down to somebody who's just like, I just want to help. That's all I want to do. Which was me for, for yeah. a few weeks there. Well, you have some talents wanna... up your sleeve. <laughs> I a... want to talk a, a little bit about uh, the the boat too, because it's a bit of a transformer, like you said. It's it's what's needed, and uh, and, and Marvin, who I, I'd love to have on, he, he's he's keen to come on, and he can talk more about maybe the boat and how it works. But it, it can like there's a huge loading bay. We can bring food. You can load with water. But it's a, it's originally built in 
like 1976 as a Japanese fishing boat, 1970 yep. something. Is that, is that right? Yes. It was a yeah. long line commercial fishing, fishing vessel out of, um, I believe it was Japan. I could be wrong. I see the China. I'm pretty Japan. sure. Yeah. And ironically, it actually turned into a Russian cruise ship at one point in time, <laughs> uh, which I thought was very because me being six feet tall, some of the beds, like obviously it's been refitted since then, but some of them yeah. were tiny at the beginning. I was like, wow, yeah. people are a little bit different back then. Um, but I want to do that video of, of me hitting my head all over the boat because <laughs> I think that needs that needs some more work. That, that's a good one good for, for, for the YouTube. Yeah. We've had a lot of modifications done since you've been on the boat, not gonna lie. And it's actually gonna go through another refit, which we can talk about a little bit because it's gonna go up to Amazon here soon too. Oh amazing really cool. yeah wow. talk about an adventure there's well let's 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 go back to what before i like took a soft subject there like so so the idea is to get help to people just recently going through a natural disaster or or, or anything or is it specifically natural disasters no like i said it's in impoverished countries it's um really people who need us and it's been interesting we are a christian organization but one of the things is we accept everybody. Uh, yeah, you we, accepted me. I'm, I'm, I'm not a devout <laughs> Christian whatsoever, but it, it sounded like a great, a we great. We still mission. love you, Brennan. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, when we die, we'll probably go to different places. It's, that's that's, uh, that's not what happen. That's not for me to decide. <laughs> that's for somebody else. So. Eh. Right. Right. If you look at the needs <laughs> in my phone, maybe not. Maybe we go to the same Oh, place. you like that know. one. That's so, a good uh, one, yeah. Well, you do have a pretty oh. twisted sense of humor. I have, to, I have to give you that. We're right, right in line on that one. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, no, like when I met you in Dominica, so the ship has been to 13 plus countries ever since 2013. And Dominica, yes, had been hit by Maria, but that was two years prior. And they yeah. were still struggling. And so we went in and you saw. And, and Ma where, Maria, real, real quick, because people don't remember, Maria was like off the scale. Like it was bigger than a five. That whole, that whole, it, all the islands that it hit, it was well beyond the capacity of the categories of the units. Like it was past a five. So horrible winds hit that place. It was terrible. I mean, when you... When I still will never forget when I first landed on the island, it looked like the entire island had just been in flames, had just burned because all the trees were just stripped bare. There was nothing. And it used to be this lush rainforest. And it's actually one of the few islands, too, that has natural fresh water on it. So which actually helps a lot yeah. when it comes after this because then people can still have drinking water, uh, if yeah. you will, which I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with. Um, but even though that was two years after the hurricane hit, there was still a lot of need. And we did something, I believe it was over 300 eye patients we saw in one weekend. And yeah. we did general medical over there too. We had some nurses come on board. We had our eye surgeons come on board. Uh, they actually did some cataract surgeries. And to kind of give you an idea too, when people get cataract surgery here in the U.S., they go through routine eye doctors, that sort of thing. In these countries that we've gone to when, and I've sat in on one of these surgeries too, which is absolutely incredible. I mean, a cataract surgery can literally take 12 minutes. That's it. Wow. And for the States, when they, it's a little cataract, people before will have a little bit of a yellow tint to their vision. And then afterwards, like, wow, I didn't realize how much color I can see which is phenomenal. I and mean, it's something that's wonderful that that's how, that's only how bad it gets. When we're doing some of these surgeries in other countries, we're pulling out cataracts that are almost the size of an M&M. &M. And when oh. you put that up to your eye, it's blinding. It is completely yeah. blinding. And literally from a 12 minute surgery, some of these people who are completely blind go from blind to being able to fully see again. And it is incredible. It is the craziest thing to watch people when you take off those bandages and they're just like, oh, wow. my, they can see. And it, I'm not going to lie. I've up a few times. It's, it's, and then it's the yeah. ripple effect on top of that where, okay, well, now, you know, they had to have people or their family take care of them. They had to have all this extra help. They had to have, 
or they couldn't start their own business. They had to sell it, whatever it is. Like there's so many different things. And then from literally a 12 minute surgery, not only can they see their grandkids again, can they see their family again? They can start their business. They can contribute back to their family, like the mental health that goes into it. And then the ripple effect that it extends. And that's just from the eye surgery aspect of Pacific Coat. That doesn't include the dental, the general, I mean, the trash pickup that we do. Oh my gosh. We picked up something like yeah. 36,000 gallons of trash in a week. And it was, why don't, why don't you describe why, why trash is very difficult on an Island? But why, why, like the, I, I kind of know the logistics behind it, but it, describe it for, so everyone gets the idea because in most countries that we're from and most countries that we're talking to trash magically disappears somewhere after we put it outside <laughs> but it, for people it's like out of sight out of mind no big deal right. it goes away um i guess and correct me if i'm wrong because i'm not quite as much of a yachty as you are but um hmm. when it comes to islands it's whatever you bring to the island like or whatever's on the island you have to bring it <laughs> yeah correct yeah well, yeah, it's yeah. And it, it happens around the world it happens like in yeah. bali they have, a, they have a similar issue i've been to some of these landfills and it's wow it's just shocking and and anyway i won't, I won't get into the, the whole kind of where trash goes on the planet and i don't know everything either it's, it's just an interesting thing that the world is dealing with and some people are selling trash and some people are buying trash it's nuts um so yeah i mean i, I don't like dominica like, where's it going to go? There's no landfill there. So it's just yeah. cool that you guys come and, and you pick up trash. And, and then I think what that does too, is that it shows the locals how important it is. And it's not even their fault necessarily. They just don't know what to do with trash. It's just or, it's not that easy. Yeah. Or sometimes it just hasn't been a project uh, that has been able to be a priority for people at the time. So even the right. public, yeah. So in Dominica, we picked up trash in the Bahamas, we picked up trash and like, those are smaller islands. Um, so we, I mean, we literally, cause Pacific Hope, again, it's a 200 foot ship, but, and we have our dental clinic and our eye clinics, but like you said, we have a lot more, we have water makers, we have multiple different tenders so we can bring people back and forth. But then we also have four wheelers, trailers, tools, everything. I mean, we really are like a compact system. So what yeah. we did in the Bahamas was we hooked up a massive trailer on the back of our four wheeler. And we just did circles around the Island and we had teams in different or different areas of the Island, just constantly picking up trash, putting it into 40 gallon bags. And as our garbage route, if you will, would just go and people would throw it on the trailer and they just keep going. And then we were able to gather it all up and take it to another Island to incinerate it at least. So it wouldn't just go into the ocean, which was yeah. wonderful. Um, our, I don't know, like, I know that's exactly what we did. Like I know our ship, like our ship itself has an incinerator, but we followed the same procedures of what was going on in the Island. We just helped them gather it at the same time. Right. So it was the ocean. But then also in the Dominican Republic, this was a really cool project that I loved. Um, they didn't have, they, they had, and forgive me, I'm so sorry, I forget the name of the trucks, but it's like where the forklift comes over. Um, it's, it's a garbage oh, truck. Oh, like right? a garbage truck. They just picks yeah. it up and shuts it back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But instead of prongs, they had the actual, like, bin where it comes yeah. over the front, the bin goes in, and the name of the truck is eluding me. I'm sorry. So <laughs> <laughs> what we did is it was a super simple concept of we literally just bore into a hill if you will just small hill the same size of the trash bin and made it a perpendicular like 90 degrees so it's just up and back but mm -hmm. made it to the exact specification or specifications of the truck so locals instead of just throwing their trash on the road or not really knowing where to put it or even sometimes in the ocean uh yeah. they could take that that trash throw it into that little designated area that we had built. We built it with concrete center blocks and some other things. And um, all that truck has to do now is go by, take the thing, throw it in. And people, and it, it was interesting to see that once we did that, everybody, yeah. I mean, there was trash coming like out of people's ears. That's it was so amazing. Cool. But yeah. at least it was all going to a better more organized right. spot, not some sort of system, not just random. Exactly. Not 
polluting on the ground. I mean, you don't know what chemicals are constantly leaking. You don't know if it ends up yeah. in the ocean because people are living near the water. And it, it was just, and again, kind of going back to the original thing of what I said about Pacific Hope, it was what was needed. And it yeah. was a simple concept and we could, it didn't require major doctors or anything. And we're so appreciative of our major doctors because again, restoring somebody's eyesight. Yeah. You can believe that's amazing, but even still the volunteers who just want to come help, they can help stack center blocks and help put concrete and help pick up trash. And it makes such a huge difference all in the same way. So, well, maybe, maybe in the, in the comments below, I'll put a link to Pacific Hope website. And and if people want to volunteer, if people want to donate their time, uh, and and it it is really fun. I would, I'd happily do it again. It it was so cool. What we did, uh, I cooked food obviously, <laughs> but, uh, we loved yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. But, and that maybe we should, we should give a shout out or a, a bump to, uh, that farm we went to. Do you remember the name of it? Oh gosh. Oh, that was so neat. Well, um, it, but I like, I, I want to, there's a thing I want to talk about specifically because you, you mentioned like, uh, well, hur- hurricanes, obviously it rips through that area and they yes. had this cool terminology for like cassava. And basically shit that grew in the ground that was hurricane proof because if you had fruit, it was gone. I mean, it was in the ocean, it was oh, yeah. airborne. Forget it. Well, but if you had dead. if you had if you had stuff in the ground, you had food. And I thought that was fascinating that you could actually like kind of ahead of time know that all right, well, we got tons of cassava. If shit hits the fan, it's it's there. And it's just brilliant, you know, like you stored food, you're growing it in the ground. Because if it's in a tree, it's gone. You're right, because it was something no, like that couple was awesome. Yuka. It, it yuka. was amazing. Yeah. It was something like yuca. It wasn't yuca, but it was something like it. And it was no, really cassava is the same thing. Cassava, yuca, manioc, it's all the same. Okay. No, pretty I, sure I might get that wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's right. I'm not gonna lie, yeah, I did just text Danny. Panda yuca is famous in like Brazil and Colombia, and it's cassava is what is also another name, and manioc is another weird name. But okay. Anyway. Pacific Hope. I know. I was texting Danny right now. I was like, hey, what was the name of that song? <laughs> they were cool. Yeah, it was a couple. Yeah, it was, it was like one, one local dude. He was like half local, half something. And she was Aussie. And they were just doing sustainable farming. These real cool Japanese technique with, uh, techniques with like a tiered um, almost mound system that would like also help funnel the water to the to the lower part so when the rain did come it would just go in the, where they wanted it brilliant yeah. it was so cool well they Amazing. did different berms constantly going throughout and then the other thing i thought was interesting too is they used a technique where everything was not everything was randomized it was kind of like organized chaos where they would put yeah. different plants all yeah. together so there was there was not like a row of a specific vegetables all kind of randomly sporadic and then they do plants that were um uh, they would essentially repel in, in, insect repellent, if you will, and then scatter it throughout. And what they were explaining to us, I don't know if you were here for that. Is oh, yeah, that no, I remember. by doing that, it actually confuses the insects. It yeah. confuses yeah. some of the more pests, if you will. So therefore their plants so was, are uh, actually left alone. As I, as I remember it, which is going to be completely inaccurate. Was it some sort of Japanese, he was like an architect and then he took up farming, a Japanese dude. And he, and he kind of got it wrong. And they come up with this new system, uh, almost like a, I want to say it's a seed ball system, but um, the idea of randomizing your crop, it's much harder to harvest, definitely. But like, if you just have a field of carrots, you're going to attract so many pests. That is this huge beacon of light that loves carrots. Like every insect that could imagine once that carrot, they can smell that shit from a mile away. But if yeah. you randomize it, it keeps a lot of the pests under control. And they had, remember in the, in the, in the mounds, they had like dead logs to be like a source of nitrates farther down. So when the roots yep. got, that's just, oh, it was brilliant stuff. It was so there cool. Was so much engineering. That when it was called free up farms too, by the that's way. It. On that's Dominica. it. Dominica. Yeah. Free up I'll farms. plug them. I'll put a link in the, in the, in the comments and uh, anyone wants to check it out. Really okay. amazing people. And if you are there on a yacht, just send them a message because you can get food from them. You can get awesome food. It was great food well you would and know probably give you a tour huh and they'll probably give you a tour like yes, you got. they will well they're just passionate they're, about it and they're really yeah. really neat 
people, very yeah. intelligent, very, uh, very solid engineers and what they're doing and successful with it as well. So they're doing yeah. a great job out there. Oh, that was the other cool thing about it. I mean, seriously, by going to these places. So that again, I could probably talk your ear off about Pacific Hope and all the experiences I've, experiences I've had, oh, but all means. going to these places, we would have never figured out. I, I would have never known that that existed had I not been volunteering with Pacific Hope. And we always pair up with different organizations and then we learn more about that. We're like, wow, that's really cool. We collaborate with more and it's, it's just all over the place in such a wonderful way yeah. because we're not, it, it we're kind not of, like, go ahead. Well, it attracts similar minds. Like it, it, it's almost like you, What's the analogy I want to make? Like almost like a snowball effect. Like once you start to get into motion and you start talking about what you're doing, you, you just, oh, I know so-and-so. And people just start connecting the dots and you have these wonderful interactions and this network that you never would have expected. percent. Well, that's actually too what happened in the Bahamas where, because we were one of the first boats in and there was not a lot of people who could actually get into the Bahamas right after the hurricane. And what was interesting about being on the island, it was that anybody who was walking around, especially in the very, very early stages, it was almost like all the small talk went out the window because you were only there to help. You either survived yeah. the hurricane or you're there to help. So anybody that you ran into, you answer like, are you okay? Or what are you like, not what are you doing in a mean way or anything, but it was like, okay, are you planes? Are you boats? Are you medical? Like, what are you doing? And so everybody... Yeah instantaneously just started collaborating with one another. Um, we were rotary on Freeport. As soon as we got there, they're like, Hey, we've got this massive warehouse with all these supplies. We have, no, we really don't have a great way of transporting it out. They were like, we do. Perfect. We've got all these vehicles. It's great. We got trailers. We got vehicles. We got all this stuff. So it, it, it's just like you said, like you attract like minds. Yeah. And then when you find those people and everybody brings their aspect or their different part of their piece of the puzzle to it, all of a sudden you complete this masterpiece that truly does help and affects lives. I mean, even just water distribution, like I said earlier, when we first got to the Bahamas, literally saved thousands of lives. It, it's just crazy how simple it's, it can be. And so like as a, as a volunteer, which you've been doing uh, for for and with Pacific Hope for a long time. Like if you were to take some sort of like abstract measurement of what you put in versus what you get back, I, I um, imagine like it's insane. It is I have honest to God never worked harder in my life. And I have never been and it I still cannot make up for the reward. Truly. Yeah. The, between the people I've met, the information I've learned, just it, it truly is like what you, I truly believe what you put into life, you're going to get back tenfold. So whether that's good or bad, yeah. and right. obviously with my faith that I believe it's from God, like that's one of the things that he teaches. Some people call it karma, some people, whatever it is, it, mm -hmm. it happens. And I mean, some of the beauty that I've seen, just natural beauty that I've seen in this world, uh, or from volunteering with Pacific Hope is something you can't pay for. You really can't. And I'm sure you kind of understand that. Like you just have to be there at the right time and right place being on a boat. It's, it's one of the most beautiful things. It was still one of my favorite memories is being in Panama on this little 19 foot tiller steer. And I was kind of like, where am I? Cause it was very much in my early stages of being on Pacific Hope. And it was no moon. And there was just bright stars. It was clear sky. And then as we're going through it, there was bioluminescence underneath us. So uh, kind of like a life of pie moment. It was a 360 view of just stars. It was beautiful. <laughs> and then, so that's just the natural side. Then talking about the yeah. people that I've met and yeah. the different aspects of their life. And then personally, it's actually come back to where I've met more people talking about Pacific Hope and I've talked to my husband about it. And then we've ended up investing with people and doing some other things that I never thought would be possible. Not like just, I'm saying from a personal aspect too, like not yeah. trying to collude the two, but it's just, and then the people who come back to Pacific Hope and then they're like, Hey, you know, I want to volunteer. I want to tell my friends about it. I want to do this. And then some of these kids end up walking away with mentorships and I, I know I'm kind of random and all the things I'm talking about, but 
when you sit right. back and you watch it and you see it, you you literally go, there's so oh, much giving here and there's so much good and there's so many things that I would have never been able to experience in my life had I not just given the time to come learn about this. And then it invigorates you. It makes you want to go pursue whatever your newest interest is like free up farms. I would have never known about yeah. that. Back I came back, started my garden, you know, kind of like started some <laughs> hobbies. And then because of it, when COVID hit, I was like, well, great. I actually have self-sufficient food. Not going yeah. away. I went out back, caught my fish, grew my vegetables. We were good to go. But, um, I couldn't en- encourage anyone enough, like to go just two weeks. You know, just, just do for a couple of weeks keep in touch with Pacific Hope and, and see where they're at and, and who they're helping. And if that interests you in any way, it's awesome. You meet so many cool people. Uh, you're actually helping people that need it. And they're just the, the, what you get back is just this feeling of warmth of like, these people just hug you. They just, they're just so thankful. And it's, uh, it's really, I can't say enough. So it's two weeks well spent, I promise, or three, two months, whatever you want to do. They're happy to have you. Yep. We definitely <laughs> are. Do you, uh, do you remember when we walked from, cause you and I, I think we got locked out of the hotel. Oh, we went around the whole Island by foot. At yep, night. We yep. walked <laughs> by ourselves at night, yeah. you and I, and I'm not gonna lie in the beginning, I was kind of like, Oh dear gosh, like, Ooh, is this, is this okay to be doing? And I loved it because I don't know if you remember what we experienced was because Pacific Oak had been there helping the locals that they knew us. They yeah. were like, uh-uh, y'all come over here. We got you. You're safe. It's no big deal. Like they, yeah. just like you said, they completely embraced us and did not, when the ship actually left, all of us were torn because locals didn't want us to leave. And we were kind of torn about it too, but we, we needed to move to a different um, country. Yeah. But it, it's, it's amazing. The people Everywhere that we've gone, I mean, people bring us fruit, people bring us bait, anything, like anything. <laughs> Just They're so excited to have us there. And then because of that, we get to learn about the culture that we never would have been able to learn otherwise. Because people are just like, no, 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 come over to our house. Come here, come here. Like, thank you, thank you so much. We're like, the reason why we do this is because we're a Christian organization. So we believe in bringing forth the word of God, like bringing just doing good works, leading by example, and trying to better the world. And again, we're not, we're very open to anybody. So yeah. whoever wants to come on board, this is just what we do. We don't say, we don't really say no, or you can't or anything like that, just because of faith based, whatever we, we accept everybody. We want everybody to come and join us, to come and see. And again, not only is that received from our crew, but from the people who we help and then I can't tell you how many people's homes I've been to because they're like, come on, come on. We can't wait to, we want to cook for you. We want to serve you dinner. We want to do all these things. And it's just, it's, it's truly amazing. It, 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 really it is, is. life changing stuff. What you do. I mean, just the, the story about cataracts and I forget something else, like something else was removed from someone when I was there and like people are in tears, their relatives are in tears because you've just fixed their life. And yeah. it's something so small that we take for granted that, in, in some of the countries that are kind of off the grid or too small, too far in the middle of nowhere, like these small things really encumber people's lives to the point of depression, alcoholism, like drug addiction, because ah, I can't see or I can't walk or, and then you guys show up and ping. We'll, we'll take it's, care of that. So when I was doing a lot of research on some of the cataract surgeries when I first got to the boat, um, I found out a really interesting fact that 50% of the world's blindness is, excuse me, is due to cataracts. Really? So if you get all the blind people in the world, half of them are blind because of cataracts. And what again, 12 minute surgery, 12 minute surgery. That's what it is. And it's crazy how it comes in. And then on top of that dental this is the other thing too. Yeah is dental is very much paired in with suicide, mental health, things of that nature. Cause it's, it's all right next Pain. to it. It constantly Pain. never goes away. And when I was interviewing some of the guys who, uh, they came in for a dental procedure, 
And I said, and I was kind of asking him about his symptoms and to see what he was feeling to kind of get an understanding of what his life was like. He's like, I haven't been able to sleep for months. I haven't been able oh. to, I haven't been able to sleep. They haven't been able to do anything. And then the second that they, I mean, literally all we did was remove a tooth. It was it. We just removed it. And the amount of relief that went, that was on his face of, he couldn't wait. And I said, well, what, what are you going to go eat first? He's like, I want the full home cooked meal. I want beans and rice and he's like I'm calling my family and everything it was it's just it's amazing how something so simple can be so life-changing and then again like I told you before the ripple effect of that person goes home to their family and then is a happier person and then it helps the everybody else's mental health and then they're better able to contribute to society and it just it keeps going further much further than we probably ever will realize to be quite honest yeah it, it's, no, it's, it's it's important stuff and it's you know these, these are people that have gone you know months without power because of whatever natural disaster and then you know kind of on the list of important things to take care of their teeth and access to someone that can take care of for them it's, it's just far down the list like there's already too much on their plate as it is it's awesome it was really cool to see just little things like that or, or you guys come back to the boat and tell a story of so-and-so and Wow, it was, it was special. It's cool what you guys do. I like well, it. Thank you. Well, we like You're I welcome. said, we love having you on board and your humor. <laughs> <laughs> so was... I'm not very funny. I'm not. I'm not fun. <laughs> hey, you're okay. It's all good. I was being so And your you're debates. Push back. I was gonna um, say, I miss your debates, Brennan. Yeah, like, yeah. We won't get into politics, but you know, I do miss your no, debates. Or, or or religion. Both those things got debated. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, um, no, it was a lot of fun, but it's, um, our next adventure. So one of the things too, by the way, if anybody wants to help with Pacific Hope is we definitely need donations right now. Um, during COVID, uh, another friend of mine who I was talking about, it's, I think it was, they said something like 72% of all nonprofits actually shut down, not, I believe it. not just paused, like dissolved and yeah. So yes, we are a nonprofit organization. We definitely need donations. Um, yeah. But one of the other things too is if people want to volunteer, definitely. We love having volunteers. That's one of the things I've been talking about. I feel like this entire time, uh, definitely go to our website. But another thing that's a simple thing too is just to follow us on Instagram. That's um, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, kind of giving us support. The more that we build with that, uh, definitely the larger presence that we have, which means that we can reach out to more people. Yeah. And for people who are looking to go on an adventure, for sure, like I said, the very, very beginning is our next project is to go up the Amazon River. And what I didn't know. And do do what? What's the mission? What's the goal? Is, well, so there's apparently quite a, like a hundred, hundreds of people up there that have really never had interaction with the outside world. I had no idea that this still existed today, that people were that isolated. Um, So we are pairing up with local different uh, people who live there, if you will, because obviously there's going to be language barriers depending on where we go, but the Amazon river itself is 4,000 miles long. So the ship's going to go through a refit and our goal, of course, again, we're Christian based. So we want to go up there kind of lead by example, but we do want to see, you know, have they had dental care? Have they had eye surgeries? Are there these people that again, just need these simple things to have a better life that we can go up, contribute, and then, um, come right back, pick up some more volunteers and do it again without being too invasive. That's the other thing that we like to do is we don't, we don't want to sit in the same country for too long because we don't want people to become dependent on us. And we don't want to take away from doctors and dentists yeah. and people who are on the island. But if they do need help in the meantime, that is something that we like to do. But so just again, I give you an idea. The Amazon River is over 4,000 miles long, which is kind of the equivalent of going from Gibraltar to Fort Lauderdale, crossing the Atlantic. And yeah, it's big. There are people up there, again, that have never really had interaction with the outside world. So we're refitting the ship. It's going to go up there and we're going to be able to hold enough fuel to go out, to go a couple thousand miles up and a couple thousand miles back. 
and see do they need fresh water? Do they need dental treatments? Do they need eye surgeries? Do they need any of that kind of thing? And then also bringing, we are going to bring some Bibles, um, again, so then for (laughs) those people, I know, I know, I know, but, um, Well, well, I consider me very interested because I've always wanted to, uh, kind of partake in the Amazon. I, I do speak Spanish, even though it's probably going to be Portuguese, at least in the beginning. But um, that would be that would be quite an adventure. That's I, I remember reading a, a book about the Amazon as a kid. These, this, I think it was a father and son paddled from Canada to the up the Amazon. It's pretty ridiculous. So, I mean, it, it's uncharted. Well, I mean, it's, it's charted territory, but it's kind of like a San yeah. Andreas situation in a weird way, if that makes sense, because you know, we really are going to be interacting with people who may look at us and going, you exist. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it, it's, we just don't know. It's, it's going to be really, there's, well, there's, actually, there's also, there's, there's new research. Um, I can't tell you the technology, but something overhead that can pass over and they're finding tons and tons of ruins up the Amazon of massive, massive multi-million inhabitant cities that, so, so there's a, a famous explorer. I can't remember one of the first ones, who said he saw massive cities when he, one of the first Spanish guys to go up the river um, said he saw these massive cities. And then 15, 20 years later, the next group came and they're like, you're full of shit. Where are these cities? They think this is all speculation is that he brought smallpox and the flu and he wiped every like not him, but his party wiped almost everyone out and the jungle took the cities back in 15, 20 years. It's quite easy. So oh we're gosh. seeing... Yeah, which I mean, even if half of that's true, twenty five percent of that's true. I want to know more. Like, I love exactly. that. Exactly, that's yeah. amazing. It's just, I got. Can you believe with today's modern technology in yeah. today's world that we still? Well, it's kind of like the ocean. We still don't know the majority of. Uh, we really don't know about the ocean, to be quite honest. No. Agreed. There's Agreed. so much more to it. We, we think we know, and we really don't have a clue. <laughs> and there's probably keys to our past down there that we, it's too expensive to, to go look for. And, and uh, it's, it's fascinating, all this stuff. Um, I love it. So anyway, Amazon. Yeah. I, like, I got rotation now, so I can do cool stuff. Ah, oh, perfect. You can come yeah. back. 10 weeks on, wow. 10 weeks off. You'll, you'll have to see the new modifications that we've made to the ship too. I think you'll like it. And our, yeah. our new boats and everything. So, what about the galley? Do you, uh, do, do you mess with the galley at all? I don't. I'm trying to remember from... I think we updated some of the equipment. Yeah. Um, but I'm trying to remember from when you were there. That is that is more Marvin's department. He kind of... The captain of the ship. <laughs> I, I, kinda, we're gonna, we're I gonna get, get my Marvin information on. from him. Huh? Yeah. We're going to get Marvin on for sure. He's such a character. and such a cool dude. No, yes. So smart. It's just unique you know human that knows his shit he's awesome very very much so there's never a dull moment with marvin i can definitely (laughs) tell you that then again i kind of become the same so i don't really know it i absolutely love him so you'll you'll have a lot of fun with him as you always do on the show too so but no it's i really appreciate everything i mean I, I don't know what my life would be like without Pacific Cove, honest to God. It is, it has been one of the best adventures of my life and the most rewarding, <laughs> the most um, educating, honest to God. And I, I can't get enough of it. I keep coming back. And a lot of people keep telling me that too. They're like, I'm planning my next trip. I want to, I want to come back. I want to see kind of like you. You're like, all right, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. So, let's everybody do it. finds their own peace their own little niche on the ship. And it's really cool to see what people end up gravitating towards and their own experiences. Nobody, nobody has the same experience. They really don't. Everybody finds what pertains to them. And it's, it's really beautiful. It's really cool to see. So. And everyone is there to, to help because it just feels good to help. Like we yeah. just want to help, help people and uh, sp- spend some time and, and spread some love and just, make sure that you know if if i'm okay then and i'm strong enough stable enough then i can give a little bit and that if we all did more of that i think it'd just be a better planet but i think that's I, what's, what that, that's what drew me to pacific Hills in the first place I'm, I'm not like a faith-based person whatsoever but i knew you guys were cool i knew marvin was cool and it was fun we had a really good time and you do feel 
you just feel good. It's it's I can't recommend it enough. It's not the only um, you know kind of charity or philanthropic thing I've ever done. So I've, I already knew that I liked it. But I would just encourage any any yachty with a bit of free time to check it out. It's, you'll like it. It's cool. Oh, well, thank you, Brennan. I appreciate hey, that a lot. Yeah. You're so nice. I'm not used to this side of you. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? How dare what? you? I'm always cordial and classy. I got to poke the bear every now and then. I mean, come <laughs> on. That's like half of our relationship. Very true. Very true. We do talk a lot of shit. It's we quite do. fun. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah. That yeah. Is- Hmm, probably now yeah. now we're saying how fun it is but we're not actually doing it so we should i don't know just talk shit <laughs> I can't think of, well because we're like telling people how like oh we talk about shit but we're not we're, right now we're just telling people how we do you see what i mean exactly i know like, i feel like I, i'm like I'm, I'm actually being nice and professional <laughs> and everything and i'm like wow i haven't had this type of conversation yeah. before then. like what's going well, on here internet. well <laughs> it is going on the internet forever so oh gosh yeah, but no, this is a, this is a no, it's a no holds barred show. I mean, you can swear, we can whatever. It doesn't doesn't matter. Maybe maybe episode two. Maybe we'll episode two. Yeah, 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 episode two for sure. I'm I wish get a little had, bit more comfortable. So I wish I had more time to, not to jump off that subject. Um, but we're. I, I wish I had more time to edit in like videos and and the kind of the visuals of, of what Pacific Hope looks like and where you guys have been. I just don't have the time. That's what the ship yeah, looks my, like right yeah, now. No. No. I wanted like a drone shot, not a sticker. I know, but at <laughs> least I can still give you this while we're on right. the podcast show if you want. Uh, but yes, so that people have the information too is it is mvmotorvesselpacifichope.org is where you can go to find the information for. And then our Instagram is also MV Pacific Hope. Um, and you'll be able to find a lot of information, a lot of photos, a lot of videos, yeah, that's true. Yeah. helping. I mean, it, it, whatever you want to see that we're doing, it's on there. Go, go find it. And there's so much more that's not even posted. I mean, truly, like you were saying, you just have to immerse yourself in it. And it's Oh, I just had an idea. What about if someone wants to do, don't you need like an IT person? Wasn't that kind of like what you were thinking about when I was on there last time? Like someone to edit all that stuff, to organize all that stuff and to get it up. That would be. Yeah, I think that would be like if they could be on the boat somehow, but I don't know. They can't don't really have Internet on there. I don't know. It's just something if someone has those capabilities, that would be a great volunteer. Very useful. Yes, very. We. All social media, love, especially like high def photos to be able to post, put brochures, like any of that kind of stuff. But seriously, I mean, it's even stuff from different perspectives. It's it's amazing to see because like you can see something like that you're doing good. Or if we're having a dental clinic, you can see it from your perspective and go, oh, wow, that was really interesting. And then all of a sudden somebody posts a photo from a different angle and you're going, I had no idea that that even happened. So, yes, yeah. So having an IT person on board to kind of capture the feeling, it's it's very, very helpful. It's, it's a huge aspect, but at the same time, um, people from with all different types of talents are always needed. And I know that Mm kind of sounds very broad and vague, but again, that's kind of another aspect of Pacific Hope that's been very neat is when people come aboard, they're like, well, I've had experience managing X, Y, Z. I'm like, Oh, great. Okay. Well then you help us run the clinic you know, cause you're used to working with people or I have experience with it. Wonderful. If you would like to work on that, like yeah. please good to help, or I have experience driving boats. I have experience here. And then when people volunteer all of a sudden, what they may have been shy about before, or maybe just haven't explored all of a sudden it comes out. It's like, well, I kind of want to try that. We're like, great. Yeah. This is wonderful. Like we need people like that. And then some of them end up staying on board and being full-time crew. It's, yeah. it's, so yes, we always need volunteers. We always need people who want to contribute, want to have a special talent and social media and IT is always needed. So interesting. Yeah. Maybe, no, I'll, do that. Maybe I'll do that when I come back. I can help you with that. Okay. Yeah. Because saying, like, cooking, cooking is fun, but I don't get to like, it's not like boots on the ground. I don't get to meet any locals or help anybody. I just, it's not the same. 
I gotcha. No, I, I will admit, <laughs> it's my favorite part. So I can totally understand where you're like, I want to get out of the galley. I want to go talk to people. Yeah. Yep. Come on, let's <laughs> yeah. go. Right. Yeah. Give <laughs> me Mark a camera. Will cook for the I'll day. Be so, I'll be so stoked with the camera. I'll just go nuts and then don't even need internet. Just get on my laptop and edit some stuff. Uh, I, I would love that. That'd be really, really cool. So I feel like, I don't know, you and I, if we went and interviewed people though, I feel like you and I would have to like tone down ourselves. I like love that. Why? You're like six, four. <laughs> uh, yeah. like, oh, dear God. <laughs> we might be intimidating. Yeah. Maybe we could be seated. <laughs> <laughs> Come over here. Let me, let me see your story. Like, that we could wheel crazy. over on the four wheeler. Just like me. <laughs> have the dog uh, think- follow us through. Yeah, that wouldn't be intimidating at all. That'd no. be fun, though. We could do some interviews. Yeah. That was, honestly, it's, I learn something every single time I ask people and I interview people. Yeah. I, I always learn something new every single time, a new perspective that I just didn't see. Or, you know, I'm running around kind of going, oh, yeah, that's great. We're doing dental. And they're like, no, you, you saved my daughter. You allowed her to go back to school. Now she can sleep. Now that, like, it's just stuff that you wouldn't know. Yeah. So, well, we wouldn't. We, our, our life is pretty like straightforward here. Like things are organized, and we're from affluent countries, which is just blind luck that we're happen to be born into them. And then we go to other places, and it 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 really does give you a perspective that's needed. That you're like, holy shit, I'm lucky. It's just luck, you know, nothing more. And then it, it, imagine a toothache like destroying years of your life because you couldn't sleep, or that's or it's crazy. Or, we all, or eat, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just giving a little bit, you know, you have to do it. Don't do it all year, but I highly recommend is people just donating a little bit of time, go somewhere cool. It, it's funny. People leave charged. So you kind of come with a, a lot of people think they come with a full battery. The battery is empty. When they leave the battery. Yeah. Full. yeah, yeah, I get it. it That's a good it, analogy. It's a, yeah. uh, it's high. It's highly rewarding on all ends. So, and some of the kids too, which is kind of cool because we have kids. I mean, we've got people from, at one point, we even had as young as eight. Now that really hasn't happened as much anymore, but we are doing some family events where people will, can bring their kids and stuff like that too. But some of even the teenagers, whatever, and when the doctors come aboard, they can leave with mentors because yeah. they've never been exposed to surgeries or dental or, I mean, think about it as adults, as professionals, We've all gotten into our own niches. And then when people come volunteer, it's not because of a specific talent or a specific niche. Obviously our doctor is a little bit different. Yes. We were searching for eye doctors and dentists, but right. you don't have to have a certain profession to just volunteer. So when you get this combination of adults and kids mixed together, all of a sudden they're talking about different professions that they never knew about or, just different ideas, different walks of life in this world. It's like, that sounds so cool. And some of them yeah. actually leave with mentors or a different idea of life, what they can get into and get invigorated to go pursue it. It's really Bring neat. your kids. Bring your yeah. kids. It'll be great. <laughs> oh. And we all are self-sufficient. We're on a boat. So we make our own yeah. water. We treat our own waste. We do all that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's all contained in the ship. It's kind of nice. So Yeah. Good times, good times. What else should we talk about? What other, what other subjects should we should we touch on about giving well, and help? And I was gonna say I like this aspect of giving. This is because it it truly the more you give, the more the more you get back. Not that you would ever expect it, but yeah. Um. Okay, so I can touch a little bit on. So I have I've recently found a doctor down in South Florida who he was a little off the cuff um actually ironically found him on instagram because he has similar humor you want know, to talk about humor that you know. <laughs> he's in those memes huh <laughs> yes yes very much so like i send him all the things that i can't put i shouldn't probably say that out loud but um <laughs> anyways and he deals a lot with hormones so as you know like and i'll say this to anybody like i went through cancer eight years ago now i think it was it was 2013. Yes. So eight years ago. And I really, I've gotten over it. It's been great. Everything's wonderful. And if anybody has, has any questions, they're more than welcome to ask. Obviously I'm very open about it. Um, but 
I noticed that a lot of things still weren't the same, especially my hormones. Um, I have gone to, I mean, I, I tried to fix it for about four or five years with absolutely no luck. And finally found this doctor down in uh, Miami actually. And I kid you not, he found what everybody else couldn't. And it has been phenomenal. Wow. So everything balanced out. And what I liked about him is he kind of has that giving aspect of his mentality was completely different. It was like, I want, I truly want to fix you. I want to give as much as, as I can to you. And it was, it was so refreshing. It was so nice that, you know, I, I told him everything about my medical history. And of course, when I walked in, he's like, you have all this stuff. I was like, yeah, I've had 13 surgeries, non-cosmetic. And he's like, what? You know, this kind of wow. stuff like that. Um, and now because of it, because he, he just, he explores all this kind of thing and it's kind of off the cuff and it's given so much. I mean, all of his patients love him and come back to him. I mean, I've been off, not only have all my hormones balanced out, um, but I am now off of Adderall that I was prescribed in college for 12 years and I've never been able to come off of Adderall and these what was that what is that like why was that prescribed so it came about because I was a collegiate athlete um and I had to take a medical my freshman year because I had four stress fractures in my lower back and started to uh, have two herniations as well what did you play I I played volleyball I knew that Yep. D1, D1 athlete, had a lot nice. of fun, absolutely loved it, very intense, but I, I, played, had... I played with her too, she's, you can tell, it's, uh, she's a weapon, it's an absolute have... volleyball weapon, yeah. Oh, you're so nice on this podcast, thank you. <laughs> Come on, I'm always this nice. Come on. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. Come on, we got to make it fun. Um. <laughs> But yeah, so anyway, I had to see choose. you fun back to the stress fractures. Yeah, I had to choose between walking or playing volleyball and being shot up with cortisone and having you know all these different surgeries, anyways. Um, but I kind of lost my train of thought, but yeah, so when I was prescribed it, when I guess I always had some form of ADD, but when all of the practices, all of the strenuous, like everything kind of went away and I was left to myself and I wasn't overexerting myself like I was before. I wasn't getting the serotonin yeah. on constant exercises. I mean, I was doing two a days constantly. Like I was in the weight room all the time. And then when all that went away, it, it was too much. I, I didn't know how to, cause I'd been doing it my entire life. And so that's why they prescribed me Adderall. Cause they're like, you have, I couldn't concentrate on anything whatsoever. And it really did actually help focus me in the beginning. But then over time, I did not realize, I will tell you this, I had no idea once I got off of it, how much anxiety I was having while on Adderall. Hmm. Is, is, and you know me, I'm not a high anxious person. Like if, no, if there's a dire situation, I actually calm down and then, once everything's fixed, then I freak out. But you know, I'm very usually level-headed, calm, cool, and collected. Yeah, I would agree with that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> but what I figured out once I went off of Adderall is what would happen is I would actually talk myself out of a decision. So I'd make a decision. And then while on Adderall, there'd be about four different options go through where I'd say, oh, is that really the right choice? Oh, well, there's this other option. There's this option. There's this option and this option. And it puts you in this like paralyzed state where you really had a hard time actually moving forward with a, any decision. And once you came down up, once I got off of Adderall, it's been a lot better to be able to kind of go, wow, nope, that's a decision I'm going to make. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, I'm sure there's these other options, but this is the one I want. And it's so, it's crazy how much easier it's been. And, um, I would highly look, I would highly recommend people to go look them up. It's called no No bullshit medicine actually is the name. Um, he's actually coming up with a, uh, his new office is called plast plast. I call it plasticity, but it's plastic city, if you will. Um, okay. And his name is Dr. Ivan Rusilico and he's absolutely phenomenal. Just takes life by the horns, wants to give back to everybody and kind of the whole reason why I talked about this, I guess, is because 
he's he he wants to leave the world a better place um he wants to make the world better and the way that he does it is by helping people with their health get better and kind of what we've talked about pacific hope is he's even told me too he's like well the more i give the more it ends up coming back to me and I meet these cool people and these cool stories. And then I've got this new case and it's giving, especially nowadays with COVID it's like you said earlier, if everybody does it, it makes the world a better place. And then on top of that, the people who give, and when you give, when you give to others, you, your mental health gets better. Yeah. There's more things that come back to you that just end up falling into place. Anxiety goes down. I mean, there's so much to it. That it's it's absolutely insane. So even if we even if we all just gave a little bit, imagine that. I mean, it'd be a different world completely instead of not giving at all and just just taking, really. Just not I mean, not not just taking, but just being like, oh, I'm just worried about me and my family, which is admirable. But then what about a little bit for people that don't have as much as you? Like I, I consider myself just lucky just to be healthy, you know, just be that's luck that's genetics and some people just they have a tougher cards a tougher set of cards than i do and if i can do something uh i'd like to it's well think about it like how good do you feel when you honestly give when you just give something yeah. no strings attached you're like and it's so, such a simple gesture let's say you give a flower to somebody and then they smile i mean literally i mean yeah. something as small as that and there's actually different the res- uh, different studies that show it does release serotonin in your brain. There are yeah. like, there's all, it actually creates all these different reactions within you on a biological level, not just even an emotional psychological level, but it really does improve your overall health. It's amazing. So sorry. Well, let's do it. Volunteer on Pacific Hope people. That's awesome. Exactly. Have a great time. Yeah. Come, come give and better, better your, your own I don't know, perspective and life and gain yeah. some joy. It, it's fill, it's fill your effective. battery. Huh? Fill your battery. Exactly. Charge it up. Especially Charge in it up. Yeah. Um, what else well, do you want to talk about? How have you been giving, know. Brennan? How have I been giving? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of just been, I got a cool job. I'm pretty pumped about. Uh, I've been doing these podcasts every week. I don't know if that's giving. That's um, been, giving a lot, actually. It's pretty it's cool. Been, I've been watching it's them. Been fun. It's been fun. I like I noticed that um what I think all of them that can't be monetized because I said the word shit. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll never make money at this. That's all right. It's still fun. Who gives a who gives a shit? YouTube. <laughs> Terrible word. Terrible word. The fork. Awful. Yeah. Get the fork out. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I think that was I think we should have you back. That's what I think, you know, you know, get Marvin on and then have you back and we can talk about more stuff, especially as you ramp up for the Amazon and you can, you can talk about the behind the scenes stuff, but yeah, yeah. Cool. we're all, we're all excited. So yeah, it will be pretty neat. Um, well, I don't know what else, what else should we talk about? I don't know. I think, I think it's been an hour or over an hour and I, won't, I like to keep these around there for some reason. I mean, we can talk as long as we want, but what's, <laughs> i'm like well, be, I'm being, with purpose again i'm being nice and professional and so i'm like yeah. okay, well can i talk about that <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, um no it's it's uh i it's it's been a good ride i've been on it for three years so it's been three years over three years isn't that crazy yeah that's, that's it. I can see it. Like you can see it. it's, it's so similar to yachting. And this is one of the biggest reasons why I want to have you on is that it's so similar, but so different and a lot more altruistic than, <clears throat> than kind of what we do as yachties. And it's a good break. It's a good break just to, to do that where it's something quite similar, same, same, but different as they say in Thailand. And then, um, yeah, you just feel pretty good afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. And you, you definitely will learn like, <laughs> My, uh, my boating skills and yachting skills, because I, I mean, I grew up with boat, like on the water, if you will, but has yeah. definitely improved since I have been on the ship, just because when people need you for different jobs, you, yeah. you're that type of person. I'm like, I'll do it. Why not? I'll go. So it's, yep. Yeah, I don't know. I, it, people, again, people 
when they contribute, and especially because we're also very appreciative when people contribute, it's it's very invigorating. And I, I guess I, I totally forgot about that aspect too. We've actually had a lot of nurses and a lot of people come on board because sometimes when you're at work and you're just in the drone of things, and a lot of times people don't say thank you. And it's not because they're mean people or something. It's just because sometimes when people go to the hospital, they expect a nurse to take care of them. That's just yeah. what it is. And same thing yeah. with bodies, same thing with anybody, like anyone in their profession, if that's what you do, lots of time people don't say thank you because they expect that from you, which again, no, I'm not trying to like downplay anybody else. It's just, that's kind of what happens in today's world. And when these, and when people come to the ship, it's so invigorating when people are just so grateful for the simplest thing that you do. I mean, the nurses that are there, they're working, they, they work harder because people are so grateful. They're, they're unbelievable. Yeah. They cry, they're grateful. I mean, and then people who drive boats who, again, just brought fresh water in these cisterns to the Island. I mean, people are, they're just welcome with like, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everything that you do. There's so much gratitude. And I think that's, a big part of what charges people when they leave Pacific Coast because yeah. like, this is why I got into this. This is why I got into medicine or this is why I got into yachting because I love the exploration. I love like helping people with this or this is why I want to get into this new profession, whatever it is. It's just, it, it flips everyone's perspective on things and it, it, it definitely does leave you charged. Yeah, I, yeah it's, it's an important flip as well you're just thankful for every advantage that you've been given by pure luck it's like yeah. you know these beautiful souls are, are born on these on these islands or, or countries that are far flung and and it's like access to education access to water sometimes is a challenge it's like and they're still beautiful souls and they're still happy and caring and loving and it's just it speaks a lot to the character of, of humanity in general and how i mean just how hopeful we can be as a as a species it's cool it's, mm -hmm. It's hopeful, you know. When you do this stuff, you see the, the good. You see the good in everyone, even if they're um, kind of dealt a, a more difficult hand than, than other other people. I know, and you see, it and you're like, "Where did I? How did I get so far off this track?" Like, wow, people are so grateful, and you kind of go, "Huh, okay, well, I'm going to stay on this track because I like this grateful track. Yeah. This is wonderful." And then you bring <laughs> it back to you, and then people are like. You're just happy. And you're like, well, yeah. I mean, if, if you saw what I saw, I'm very happy right now. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's cool. I, yeah. Again, as you can tell, I mean, I haven't stopped smiling since you've been asking me questions about it, and that's not <laughs> because I'm I'm on a podcast. Eh, no. It's, uh -huh. it's, well, when was the last time you were on Pacific Hope? When what was the last? Was the Bahamas? <sighs> been way way too long for me well, um, i mean covid's over covid's a year now going on a year yep so um my last time was in the bahamas but the boat has actually been to the dominican republic since then it did leave the bahamas um and it was doing uh some just outreaches and good works and the dr they went to Barbados, I believe, too. And so there's more information coming on that one. I don't want to nice. yet, but uh, we, yeah. Barbados. What happened in Barbados? Like, what's, what's, is it still Maria or is it? Uh, Barbados, to... and, again, so we're not exclusive to disaster relief. It's just sometimes if people need us there. And so mm -hmm. Barbados there um, is a, base down there but i don't want to say anything yet like oh yeah don't don't yeah we'll yeah. save it for next so, time next time exactly so I, like, like, i don't want to i'll let marvin <laughs> marvin tell that one if that makes sense i'm like, excited to have him on too he's a character yeah he's no, a good dude marvin a character yeah. no yeah. what are you talking and about the, and for the yachties like his kind of I don't even know if it's his main, I guess it's his side hustle. I think Pacific Hope is his main thing, but he, he, he designs boats. He designs yachts, big 90 meter ocean coves. And yeah, he's a very, very intelligent dude, but it's, I don't know, it's, it's hard to describe our, but excited to have him on. But uh, it was great to have you on. This has been, oh. this has been sick. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Definitely. I, I was super excited when you asked me and I, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of did rub it in Marvin's face a little bit. I was like, Hey, Brendan asked me on the podcast. He's like, well, he asked me too. I'm just teasing. <laughs> so it was a little funny. Like, cool. 
I was like, I'm gonna have Nikki on first, and then then we'll then we'll then we'll get Papa Bear on and and talk about it. Exactly. (laughs) I can only say because he's been like a really close friend of mine, so that's why every now and then I gotta you know poke that bear. Just just keep my friend. Yeah, you you like that. You like that. I do. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. I try to bring up. Exactly. <laughs> you like it too. We've obviously been friends ever since. So apparently yeah. it's endearing to some people. So who knows? Well, it's like, I, I mean, it started in restaurants for me, but then also on yachts is that you, sometimes you get stuck in the monotony of a job, whether it's peeling potatoes or a, a, an eight week charter. And without talking shit, without making fun of each other, it would be incredibly boring. Like you just have to like pranks, jokes, whatever, just to pass the time. Like you're stuck in the same room, same boat, whatever. Like, yeah, I've well, got a, I got a, I got a good prank planned. I'm not going to say it now, but it's, it's, it's one I've done in the past. Oh, ah, it's going to be good. It's going to be filmed. Yeah. That's to do with, I can't say it. Cause I, it'll give away. If somebody watches it, it's going to, it's going to be good though. Yeah, it's gonna that, be good. I can't wait. I can't wait. You do, do pull off some pretty cool things when it comes to that. No. Okay, you're pretty, you're pretty creative mind there. So I'm a little yeah. nervous person that you're about to prank oh no it's nothing oh it'll just be a shock value for sure like, i wish yeah. you could tell it now but i can't i can't say it it's, i'll do a video on it i'm gonna film the whole thing it's gonna be great it's gonna be great i'll say everything but, that you have said is just still making me nervous you're like oh shock value <laughs> oh, okay yeah that definitely makes me nervous for this person yeah so. and what well, does involve human feces so oh my gosh <laughs> yeah yeah or dare i say imitation human species okay that's i was kind of hoping you were going for that to be yeah honest. yeah 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 i mean that's i have good. made that cat litter box cake you know what i'm talking about have you seen no. that no <laughs> yes oh it's that's good awful. you don't have to say anymore i'm like yes that's a good cake yeah i even put like a pooper scooper in the dishwasher so it would like be <laughs> sterilized <laughs> <laughs> was a real one you didn't like buy a new one <laughs> oh no no no! i bought a new one but i still sterilized it like okay. i don't have a cat just in case they tested that at the factory like oh yeah scoops of poop good yeah, like, in the box. Oh, cool. i wash everything that i use like eating utensils <laughs> with are you kidding me so but that was what was used to serve the cake so it was um, I like it that's a really good idea true birthday committed to it I was giving, I was, I was giving a lot to this person. <laughs> <laughs> sense of humor, Nikki, sense of humor gets us through anything, I feel yeah. like. Hey, it makes us smile, brings laughter, and again, kind of like what I was talking about earlier, too, is it not only does it help psychologically, but it is, it's proven to help biologically, too. It, it's, it's, I believe it. Amazing. I believe so, it. You got to keep laughing. Got to keep yeah, laughing. Yeah, you have to. You have to, for sure. No matter how bad it gets, <laughs> like, no gotta laugh at it. but like what I've noticed too, especially from the motorcycle trip, but also in yachting, like you have these instances of uh, the bad times, right? Whatever they are, either like I'm um, going through Kazakhstan and it's just bad luck after bad luck. And uh, those are the great stories though. Or, or you do an eight week charter and it becomes like a lifestyle for a while. And you're like, this sucks. I just work and sleep, but you bond with the people that you did it with. And that's a much better story than, yeah, things were great for a while. Like, no one cares. Nothing gives a shit. Like, let's talk about the bad stuff. I don't I want to hear, like, misery and pain and some blood. And then that's a good story. So if I can remember that, and sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, that you're like, oh, this is pretty shitty. But it'll be a good story. This is going to be This is gonna be a good story. Yeah. It's like, like whenever you're rec- recanting things, it's like, hey, remember that time we threw this person off the boat or something? You know what I mean? And then everybody instantly laughs. Like, not that we did, but you know what I mean. Like, remember that time you fell in the water? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I knew that was coming up next. See? There you go. Oh, no, that was gold. <laughs> Once. All, Once. All six foot just went, whoa, between the boat and the dock. You all right? You okay? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And you're like, you're oh, yeah. you're cut- you like totally went so fast, like 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 no one saw. Kind of like, oh, oh no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh, it was oh so funny. God. It was this gold. Is, this is the one thing that, like, why I, in that I still remember this moment to this day. Like, I knew exactly what I was thinking because what I did is I grabbed um, one of the levers trying to get on the boat, and it just went, and I remember going, I have two options. 
I can either look like an angry spider monkey trying to like climb up the boat or I can just gracefully fall into the water and not injure myself. And yeah. it, it makes you wonder, you're like, how can I go through that sequence of thought process in a quarter yeah, of a fra- second? Fractions of a second. Yeah. yeah. You're like, but I can't remember what I had for breakfast today. Like, yeah. what? The, the human mind is fascinating. I still have a, I have a scar from that. Like I scraped on a spike on those. Those docks were gnarly. I'm glad you didn't get hurt. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be laughing, but it was. Well, we, re- 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 we rebuilt those docks too. So That's right. But wow. yeah, it was in the process. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's a cool scar though. So I, lie. I like the scar. I'm not going to lie. I just tell people I got shanked. I was like, well, we don't want to scare people from coming to Pacific Hope. It's not like physically dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no no it, so, I, it, it's all it's all self-inflicted so it's fine yeah we have medical staff on board so at least exactly if you're like me or yeah. brennan that there's somebody yeah. there to take care of you so that's good yeah. i think my favorite though was when muriel like didn't rub in the sunscreen on you on your back oh you love that photo i love oh. it looks like zorro yeah. got you with sunscreen yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Muriel, that old chestnut, eh? She didn't rub it in. She didn't rub it in. Um, I all right, well, I thank you for coming. I think we got to sign off now. We're well past the hour, but it was fun. Let's do it again. Let's talk more uh, about anything you want. But yeah, Pacific Hope kind of ramping up. That would be, that'd be sick. Cool. Yeah, yeah well, again, thank you for having me on board. Um, Get the fork help. out. Yeah, I, I'll get the fork out, I guess. <laughs> no, I was tell just other people to get the fork out to Pacific Hope. Come on. <laughs> no, I wasn't telling you to get the fork out. I was just like, I felt like you were searching for the name of the podcast because I, I rarely say it. So oh, well. thank you for being a guest on Get the Fork Out. It's been it's fun. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> love you always, Brennan. All right. Love you too. See ya. Bye, hon. Bye. Bye. She's awesome, isn't she? She's a little crack up that one. Uh, good times. Can't recommend Pacific Hope enough. Go donate your time, help some people out, be grateful for everything that you have, and and give give to those that, that are at a hard time and in a hard spot. It's just you'll love it. You'll have a great time. You'll feel some fulfillment, some energy, and be reinvigorated. I promise. Next up, uh, we're going to talk to a lot of people have asked for advice on becoming a yacht chef. So. Um, I got one of the best crew agents in the game, Helen Papa Michael, and her and I are going to talk about tips, tricks, strategies, things to do, things not to do. Uh, if you're a greenie, uh, if you're a noob, uh, lots of stuff focusing on you guys and girls specifically. Um, for the veteran guys, you should know all this stuff already, but a lot of you are super talented and, and never have to look for work. So these are just a few things from a 20 year Yacht veteran, and she's also a 20 year crew placement agent, specifically for interior, specifically for chefs. Hope you enjoy the next episode of Get the Fork Out.